In this demonstration, I'm going to show how to set up a port as an OPC client and also how to set up a point as an OPC point. Select Communications, OPC Clients. We don't have any configured, so select New. Enter a name. Select OK. We don't have a type, so we need to get the ID and the server name, so select Settings. We're going to be trying to connect to a server on this local computer, so we just leave this as local computer. If it was a remote computer and we knew its name or its IP address, we could just enter it here. Selecting this Browse button will cause the program to browse for OPC servers on computers on the same network as this computer. So selecting this button can cause a delay because it will have to go search for all of those computers before it returns. Depending on the network size, this can take quite a bit of time. But this is going to be the local computer, so we select Browse. We'll leave the computer's local computer. Select Search. And this is the server that we're going to connect to. This is its ID. Select OK. We're not going to be doing anything with the secondary, so we'll just leave this for now. Select OK. There's our server name, there's our type, it's a data access server. And now we're going to select Groups. There always has to be at least one group configured. If we try to delete it, it will tell us at least one group must be defined. We'll just leave it as default underscore for now. We're going to set the dead band to zero because we know this server won't have any noise coming across the analog values. The dead band will only change when we change it, so we don't have to worry about noise. We do want the group to start up as active. We don't want to have to set it active. And this update rate has to do with the server sending information to the client periodically. Changes to values that are outside the range of this dead band are reported by exception. So we'll just leave it at 1,000. Select OK. Now our server is set up. Select OK. Save the project. Now let's set up a point. Select Configuration, Points. These are points that we created earlier. We want to create a new point, but we want it to be of type OPC. Select New Point. This is the OPC point configuration. This is connect to the server, which we set up earlier under this port, and this is to disconnect from it. We're going to skip to the preferences for just a second. Select Preferences. Auto Connect Last Server is so that if we're using the same server over and over to create points, we just want to connect to the same one so that we can browse it easier. We don't have to cl click on this Connect icon every time. Browse to Last Item Position is because when you're adding items, frequently the items that you're adding are next to each other. And sometimes they can be four and five levels down. So this makes it easier to come back in and browse for uh, items. Auto Query Item Properties is because an item in OPC has many attributes, or can have many attributes. The minimum is six. And some of those attributes we will use, or can use, inside of the HMI. Use items found in point configuration. What this means is when we auto query these item properties, if it comes back with item properties that we can use, like engineering units or the access, read, write, write, or read, we can just use those properties instead of having to configure them again. Select last group selected is because if you're adding items to a, to a group, which all items must be in a group, Let's say you have Pumper 1 and Pumper 2 and you're adding them in Pumper 2. You don't want to have to select Pumper 2 each time. So this selects the last group selected when you enter this dialog. Attempt to use source as a tag name. The tag in the server has a source string and we have a tag name. So it attempts to use the same tag name in both 
locations. We can't change the server tag name. It can be changed on the server, but the client can't change it. But we can change our tag name. So we're going to leave this on and see if it works. Of course, tag names must be unique, so sometimes it may not work. But it will attempt to use source address as tag name. So select OK. Now we're going to connect to the server. And now we are connected to the server, and these are the server items. This is our group. Our default group is selected. We're going to select the data type examples. Uh, this is a simulation server. One has these data type examples and simulation examples. We're going to select 16-bit device. We're going to select the K registers. And as you see, we're three levels down. And we're going to select long2. And as you see, when we select long2, this is the source address in the server. And because we had the checkbox enabled, it is going to attempt to use that as the tag name. And if we select long3, see this changes to a 3, and this changes to a 3. And this is that collected parameters. And since this is enabled, when we select OK for long2, it will apply read-write as the access property. So select OK. And we see here's our port. Here's our source. It did set the access rights to read-write. And here's our default group. And you see the tag name is was accepted because it wasn't already used. That point didn't have any high or low engineering units or instrument range. We're just going to leave them at zero because this is just for demonstration. So we'll leave all these other settings, alarm settings, as default also. Select OK. And there's our there's our new point. Select OK and save the project. Now we want to go into graphics and set up a point so that we can see these see this point change inside the server. Select graphics, double click on the screen. This is a text reading item from earlier. We're going to create a new one. Let's make its color green. to show the alignment here. Select alignment, align top. Okay. Now we're going to double click on it. We're going to select text reading. We're going to select source, which is here's our tag name, process variable analog. We're going to not use any of these settings over here. So we just say NA for comparison, which means when it's scanning, it starts at the top and scans to the bottom. If it gets to here, it uses these. Otherwise, it looks for a comparison to match, and then it uses these settings. Since we set NA as the first one, it's going to use these settings and stop processing. It's faster to do it here than to do it further down. Select OK. Make sure the checkbox is enabled. Select OK. Select Save. Close and close. Now we're going to start monitoring. Here's our point from before. This is our OPC tag. And now we have an OPC client, another client connected to the server. We're one client, there's another client connected. And here's that value in that other client. We could change the value inside of PKHMI, which would write to the server and then read back into PKHMI. But for this demonstration, we're going to use another client to set the value. We're going to do an asynchronous write. We're going to set the value to 55. It goes to the server and now it's over into PHMI. As you see it happens pretty pretty quickly. And that's how you set up a OPC client connecting to an OPC server and setting up a point.